Chairman Jordan, Ranking Member Plaskett, and members of the subcommittee. Thank you so much for the invitation to testify today. I currently serve as the president of Empower Oversight. We're honored to represent Stephen Friend and Marcus Allen. FBI whistleblowers have second-class status compared to those in most federal agencies. When Congress adopted the modern system of whistleblower protections, it prohibited retaliation against FBI whistleblowers. But it gave them none of the process that other federal law enforcement agencies received, like the DEA, the ATF, U.S. Marshals, and Secret Service. Whistleblowers of those agencies can all file retaliation complaints with the U.S. Office of Special Counsel, an independent agency. FBI whistleblowers cannot. Whistleblowers at those agencies can all repeal retaliation to the Merit Systems Protection Board, on which I recently served. Until just last year, FBI whistleblowers could not. They finally got that right in last December's NDAA. But Congress must ensure that this new jurisdiction applies as intended to all FBI retaliation cases. Many have been winning their way for years through DOJ's long and extensive process. But the laws prohibiting retaliation have been on the books that entire time. The FBI cannot claim now that these are new rights just because they now have to justify their actions before the MSPB. Time has demonstrated, in my opinion, that it was a mistake to exclude the FBI from the standard whistleblower protection process. It discourages integrity and encourages deceit and even corruption. Congress should treat the FBI the same as all other federal law enforcement agencies, eliminating a special exception and giving its employees access to OSC to investigate retaliation. The hardworking of the employees of the FBI deserve equal protection of the law. The FBI's latest troubling practice is suspending security clearances to retaliate against whistleblowers. Mr. Friend and Mr. Allen, along with Mr. O'Boyle, are just several public examples of this trend. When the FBI suspends a clearance, it also immediately suspends the employee indefinitely, without pay. To make matters worse, it holds them and their families hostage by requiring them to get permission to take another job, permission the FBI routinely denies. Congress needs to ensure the FBI stops this abuse. In light of all these obstacles for FBI whistleblowers, you would think Congress would do everything that it could to welcome their disclosures here. But FBI employees coming to Congress have unfortunately been shamefully treated by Democrats on this committee. It's one thing to hear allegations and find them unpersuasive or even distasteful. An office can even ignore those allegations if they choose. That's their prerogative. But to go out and actively smear the individuals making disclosures is far worse. That's what the Democrats on this committee did when they released a March 2nd report entitled GOP Witnesses, what their disclosures indicate about the state of the Republican investigations. That report was inaccurate, both on the law and on the facts. The law doesn't define the term whistleblower. Instead, it protects from retaliation individuals who engage in protected activity. For over a century, simply making disclosures of any information to Congress has been a protected activity. Furthermore, an appropriations writer, in effect at this time, prohibits money from paying the salary of any federal employee who prohibits or prevents any other federal employee, such as FBI whistleblowers, from communicating with Congress. The Democrats' report denied whistleblower status to individuals engaged in the precise activity the legislative branch has considered protected since 1912. The report's reliance on evidence for whistleblower status is also misplaced. Simply communicating a reasonable belief of misconduct is protected whistleblower activity under the law. This applies regardless of whether the whistleblower produces evidence at that time backing up their allegations. Only protecting whistleblower disclosures accompanied by conclusive evidence, as the Democrats seem to require, would have disastrous consequences for retaliation throughout the federal government. My experience working for Congress was that whistleblowers brought allegations, and where the committees found those allegations worthy of further follow-up and congressional action, we conducted investigations. No one expects a private citizen to investigate a crime before going to the police, and we didn't expect a whistleblower to investigate their own agency. That's also essentially how the law for remedying retaliation through the MSPB is set up, where making a non-frivolous allegation leads to discovery, interviews, and more. Simply put, the burden isn't on the whistleblower to produce the evidence at the outset. That's why there's an investigative process. The Democrats' report also got the facts wrong. For example, they claim DOJ IG declined to investigate Mr. Friend's claim, when in fact, DOJ IG will be interviewing Mr. Friend tomorrow and has an ongoing investigation. DOJ IG says no one from the Democrat staff ever contacted their office to verify this claim before issuing their report. Inexcusably, a number of mainstream media sources simply repeated the Democrats' wrong information uncritically without bothering to check the facts for themselves, which is why there were multiple retractions. 
FBI whistleblowers have traveled a hard road over the years. They should be treated by Congress the same as other whistleblowers. Issuing reports smearing those who come forward from the FBI will unquestionably deter others from taking that same path. Congress must have firsthand information about how federal agencies are operating to perform its constitutional duty of oversight. Why would future whistleblowers bring their disclosures to Congress if they think they might be treated like this? Attacking whistleblowers hurts this committee and others, the House of Representatives as an institution, and Congress as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Levitt. The chair recognizes the gentlelady.